As for the fighting, Russia's assault on the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv continues, with its forces inching slowly to the city center. Russia has increased its indiscriminate lobbing of missiles at residential buildings. Russian shelling rocked a 12-story apartment building this morning, injuring two people and damaging a neighboring nine-story structure. Ukraine's state emergency services says at least 37 people were evacuated from the fire caused by the attack, while search and rescue efforts are underway for more victims. This, as a Russian missile yesterday hit a weapons factory in the city, causing heavy damage. Moscow has said in the past it plans to attack Ukrainian arms factories, calling them, quote, legitimate targets. The city's mayor has imposed a curfew through tomorrow morning, saying it is a difficult and dangerous moment. The head of Kyiv region says that Russian troops are trying to cut off the capital. Twelve towns around the city are without water, and half of those are without heat. The mayor of Ukraine's second-largest city, Kharkiv, yesterday said at least 600 buildings have been destroyed in that city since the invasion began. Joining us now from Kiev, NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Richard? Good morning. The streets here in Kyiv are utterly quiet. There is nobody out. Nobody's walking around. There is a blanket curfew, and it is being enforced. The, uh, if, you, if you look on the streets now, you will not see a single car. The only people you see on the streets are soldiers, civil defense, who are manning checkpoints. As Russia continues to lob missiles into the city, there's been a, 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 there was a large explosion on the outskirts uh, a short while ago while you were reading that uh, previous report. But Ukrainian forces also are going on the offensive, according to several Ukrainian officials, that starting last night and into this morning, uh, they say that they have launched uh, several what they're describing is very large-scale offensives against Russian troops, and they are uh, reporting back encouraging battlefield information. In uh, Mariupol, in the south, uh, two local officials describe a very troubling situation in that city. As you know, the city had been surrounded for days. Uh, there was a, a humanitarian corridor that opened yesterday, allowing 2,000 cars to leave, but it didn't allow—it was just one-way traffic out of the city. There was no supplies that went in, and then these local officials said that Russian troops took between four and 500 people hostage, herding them into a hospital that Russian forces have taken over, including doctors and patients, and are holding them as human shields, not allowing them to, to leave the building. And they are, uh, and Ukrainian officials are, are, are warning of the dangers of that. And going back to what you were saying earlier, uh, overnight there was that extraordinary visit by three NATO prime ministers who came to this city, met with uh, President Zelensky, and because they couldn't fly, there was a no, there is a, effectively a no-fly zone because it is a, a it is a contested airspace. They had to come by train. Yeah, Richard, um, I, I, I'm, I'm curious what, what we read in the United States, what we we hear from uh, from you and others. Uh, generally, it, it seems to be that the battle for Kiev uh, has really ground to a halt. That the Russians' advance has stopped, and now this morning you're telling us uh, that actually the Ukrainians. Are, are now pushing back with counteroffenses. Uh, what more can you tell us about uh, the Russian forces and their inability to encircle this city and, 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 and the, what you're hearing uh, from troops on the ground there? So we're hearing from Ukrainian troops, but I'm also hearing from U.S. military officials that the Russian offensive has been poorly coordinated, that it seems to be uh, there is very little communication between the National Guard and the regular Russian army troops, that they are not coordinating well with air cover, that sometimes Russian troops have been sent into small engagement battles, uh, Russian uh, uh, armored personnel carriers and tanks without air cover, and they've been uh, quickly eliminated by Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian forces have been using their Turkish drones very effectively. Uh, they are hoping, as the Biden administration is now suggesting, that they might get some more lethal drones from the United States, in particular a system called the Switchblade, which is a, a, a launched drone system that is launched into the air and then dive bombs kamikaze style into uh, targets and, and explodes. Uh, they are hoping to, to get more of those. but. The Russians have not been able to 
not even advance into the center of Kiev. They have not taken some of the surrounding suburbs, even though they have been fighting there for, for several weeks now. And as, as of overnight, the Russia and the Ukrainians say that they are taking advantage of the, the stalled momentum that the Russians have been facing to launch a counteroffensive. So this city is not surrounded. This city is not under attack with street-to-street -street fighting. And if anything, the Russians seem to be on their back foot uh, where, where the, in, in their positions around the city. It's fascinating. Uh, thank you so much, NBC's Richard Engel, as always, for your extraordinary reporting. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.